This episode of Oregon Lifestyles has been made possible by the city of Brookings, Oregon, located in the heart of America's Wild Rivers Coast. Field and Oregon Lifestyles episode on Brookings, Oregon. This is the southernmost coastal town in Oregon. We're right over the California border, and this is the first place you might want to stop to pick up some information. There's a lot of little trails. We're re very near to the beach, and the visitor center is absolutely gorgeous. So let's go inside and see what we can find to do in Brookings. beautiful port of Brookings Harbor and one of my favorite activities is to go kayaking on the Oregon coast. It's always beautiful in the Brookings Harbor. It's on the banana belt so it keeps it a little bit warmer year round. This is actually mid-October and it's t-shirt weather. Let's check out some of these sailboats. What do you say Terry Lynn? Yeah let's do it. Today we're paddling in the amazing Chetco River boat basin and, and estuary. There's lots of marine life to check out here from seabirds to marine mammals. There's uh, close-up shots of the commercial fishing boats, the pleasure craft, and the charter boats. So there's a lot to see in this safe, easy paddle in the Chetco River. And those are Brant's cormorants over there. Um, another diving bird. There's quite a few grebes in the estuary doing a little fishing right now. And here comes a commercial fishing boat in from the ocean. One of the cool things about the Checo River bar crossing is it's really protected from the swell and the wind. So the accessibility to get into the ocean from Brookings is, is really good. It's safe here. As you can see, we're right in the middle of the bar right now, and it's almost flat. That's Sport Haven Beach off to our left here. A real popular tourist beach and a good surfing spot. This is a good place to paddle because it's so protected from the swells and the wind. There's, as you can see, the water is really clear. There's lots of birds to check out along the edge of the river. Another really cool thing about being on the Oregon coast in Brookings is you can kayak fish, also uh, river fishing. So people come here to catch salmon. Thank you for taking us out. Thanks for having me. On the Chetco River, Brookings Harbor, on a beautiful day. A morning paddle was a great way to start my coastal adventure. And now it was time to find a place to stay for the next few nights. The wonderful thing about all the accommodations in Brookings is they're in walking distance to town, to restaurants, shopping, very close to the Chetco River, and a short walk to the beach here in Brookings. By this time I had worked up quite the appetite, and so I took a stroll through town to see what I could find. I'm at Art Alley Grill. I'm here with Christina Olson, who runs the gallery downstairs. This is a very, very unique building because is it not three stories? It is. We have art on all three levels and a restaurant upstairs and a restaurant downstairs. I know, and it's so nice because you would not believe this, but it's middle of October in Brookings and it is really warm. We're in paradise. Yeah, I think it's like 70 degrees. So besides the really good food they have here, uh, you have a lot of local artists here, is that correct? Yes, that's our main focus. And your own art. Yes, <laughs> I saw your art, it's very beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, another really fun thing for people to do, you have an art walk the second Saturday second of Saturday the month. Saturday of each month. Round 12 venues, each with live music and refreshments. It's really fun and people come for the snacks and stay for the art and vice versa. I'm really looking forward to enjoying this beautiful salad. Salad, soups and sandwiches all homemade and then the same chefs do um, regular entree fare downstairs. Oh wonderful. Well that's yeah. wonderful. I think we should just dig into the salad and uh, enjoy our day. For years the coast of Oregon has attracted and inspired a variety of artists. Throughout the year there are numerous festivals around Brookings that will surely have something for everyone. Local artisans use regional products to create one-of-a-kind works of art. 
So as an Oregon coastal artist, we're just taking advantage of our natural resources that are really known to this area. And the myrtle wood is really a wood that's known to be native to southern Oregon in particular. And what we have here is a one-piece log table that was taken from one myrtle log and kept as a one-piece whole log table. There always seems to be a festival or special event happening on the southern Oregon coast. One of the longest running annual events is the Southern Oregon Kite Festival. Since 1993, the Southern Oregon Kite Festival has been one of the premier kite festivals in the United States, with some of the most well-known kite flyers and kite makers displaying their creations. You may have heard of the term Oregon's Bounty. The state of Oregon is rich with natural resources. Combine that with the popular idea that anything is possible and you will find an overwhelming amount of locally produced products. In and around Brookings, you will find craft beers and distilled spirits. And a great activity is to tour some local production facilities. Located six miles north of Brookings, nestled up in a little rainforest, is Brandy Peak Distillery. Hi. Hi there. Welcome. We actually uh, make our products from the fruit itself. And so we do it on a seasonal basis. We get our pears from the Rogue Valley. And they bring them in after they harvest them green, put them into cold storage. So they sit out here in the sunshine, and then they ripen. And when they're ripe, we crush them. And we crush the whole pear, skin, seeds, and everything. We add the yeast to start the fermentation. What that does is it converts the sugar that's in the fruit to alcohol. The higher the sugar content, the more alcohol that you get. These two are what I tell people, the only two legal wood-fired pot stills in the country. We use a lot of wood that we have on the property and we use it to go ahead and boil our product. And the concept here is that alcohol boils at a lower temperature than water does. So the alcohol vapors is what you'll see coming across here, goes across this pipe here into our stainless steel condenser. And inside the condenser are coils. Those coils will then uh, allow the vapors to cool back down to liquid. Comes down through there and we collect it in little jugs that you see here and up to a 13 gallon carboy. Well, I'm gonna have you meet my husband, David. This little bottle here represents about 17 pounds of pears and it's been aged for five years in oak. Goodness, that's pretty special. <laughs> Ooh, you could taste the pear. But we also make a blackberry liqueur here. This is one of our most popular items. Uh, this is made with our wild local blackberries. And when we drain that liquid off, we add a little sugar to it and we bottle it. Yum. That's sweet. It's good. I like that one. Sweet. So it's really fun to come up here to Brandy Peak Distillery. Um, it's just outside of Brookings, just north, and it's up in the wilderness and the rainforest. And thank you so much for thank being for on Oregon time. Lifestyles, and I really enjoyed the brandy. Oregon is a state where hops grow in abundance, and with a farm-to-glass philosophy, it's no wonder that in Oregon, beer is not just a beverage, it's a lifestyle. Hi there. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I think I'm at Tight Lines Brewery. You're at Tight Lines Brewery. You are. Hi. I'm Dave Ferris. This is where we brew beer. This is the hot water tank. It's called a hot liquor tank. All that holds is water. This is called a mash tun. This is where we, we mill the grain. We put the grain in with water, heat it to certain temperatures to get certain sugars out of the out of the grain, which is primarily barley. Then we move it into this tank. We have a two-barrel system. So we add hops. Then we pump it over here into uh, one of two of our fermenters. Right now, this fermenter is fermenting our RIP pale ale. It's full of beer. This one we just pulled out yesterday or the day before. Our, uh, our dog here, Porter, just moved it into the refrigerator unit back here. I transfer it in here to my bright tank where I have a sample valve and I have uh, pieces hooked onto here so I can add CO2, force carbonate, and test. So this morning I came in, I force carbonated the beer, and I test it from my sample valve down here. I go ahead and open this valve, the beer comes out, and I can see how far along my process is. See, just this morning there was no carbonation in this beer. Now there is. And you can also just do a taste test too. Would you like to try this? That's really smooth. So Nate, what's the difference between what came straight out of here and what we'll try upstairs? Okay, so this is still, maybe you would call baby beer. What I do is I let this age in the kegs 
for at least a month to a month and a half. What we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and go upstairs and you'll be able to taste the finished product. And this is this this is what we just tasted downstairs, or I tasted. Yes. Um, and this has just been matured more, and you've put. Um, yeah, that's that's aged for an extra month and a half or so. Okay. So that's nice. that's the finished product. Oh, and that is different. It's really, really good. I'm really excited that you guys have this brewery in Brookings. It's very awesome for the area and for Southern Oregon. Of course, another great local product on the coast is fresh fish. So if you're down here in Harbor, right next to Brookings, you can actually come down and buy fish right from the fishermen. And so you just got back in. Were you out just this morning? Just this morning. Okay. And what do you, you fish year round? Year round for crab, salmon, wild fish, sometimes tuna. Wow, that's a big salmon. Oh, oh wow. And so you then deliver it to Checo Seafood? I also take them over to the local restaurants. Yeah. And people can come down if they can catch you and buy fish straight straight off, off of the you. Boat. I have a limited fish license. license. Allow me to fish yourself straight to the public. I have my crab tank that I put my crab in when I'm live fishing crab. And so how many crab nets do you do you own? I have 550 traps. Traps, they're called traps. Those are the big round ones. Yeah, the big round ones. And so you can't obviously take all those traps out at once and because your boat wouldn't hold them. So you take how many out at a time? About 75 I feel comfortable with. So and then you it. drop them and then you come back and pick up more and then drop them and come back. And so it's full time kind of. They give us three days to begin the season to set our gear before the season opens. Wow. And you've been doing this for how long, John? About 30 years. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us on oh, your fishing schedule. Very cool. Buy most of this local fish right off the day boats, and we get a pretty good variety of fish, bottom fish in particular, but we get salmon and tuna and petroli sole and shrimp, and everything is seasonal. What's nice about this fish market and the restaurant is that Tammy, who runs the restaurant, is getting a lot of the fresh fish that I process here and sells it sells to the public up there in the different dishes. Yeah, we do smoke our own fish here, and uh, I do a, quite a variety of different fish. Salmon, which is very popular, and albacore, and shrimp, and oysters, and I've got a smoke going right now. Happy hour is big in Oregon, so I filled up my growler, picked up some smoked fish, and found a table with a view. I'm at beautiful Harris Beach, just north of Brookings. This is the most beautiful spot. You can come here, you can camp. There's some surfers in the background. I am enjoying one of the local brews. This is Tight Lines Brewery, located right in Brookings. And this is a growler. If you do not know what a growler is, maybe you've been hearing about it. The, the reason that you want to have a growler in your car, as I do, as when I travel, is because sometimes the breweries will only make a certain amount of a specialty beer and then when it's out, it's out. And so this is a way that you can get a beer that they're not bottling or selling in any other way than a growler. Also, um, Biscuit and I have gone and picked up some fresh seafood. This would be um, salmon from the local market, locally caught and smoked. This one particularly at Chetco Seafood. At low tide, this is one of the most wonderful places on the Oregon coast to go beach combing and uh, tide pooling. Big deal here. As luck would have it, the tides were low, so I went out to see what I could find. There were a variety of starfish and sea anemones and other strange creatures I had never seen. It was like walking through a natural aquarium. And now it was time to find dinner. I was getting a really good taste of Oregon's bounty and chefs throughout the state take full advantage of all the seasonal local products. This is uh, Queen Belit right here, also known as Porcini Mushroom. Um, absolutely lovely mushroom, um, got great flavor, great texture. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to have a fresh Belit, uh, you are missing out. We start off with our chicken, a little bit of olive oil, let your pan heat up for a moment, lay your chicken in here. Here it's sizzling. You're gonna go ahead and put in some of our fresh sliced bolites. 
just a beautiful little perfect specimen right there. Southern Oregon, actually the whole coast of Oregon has just an amazing, amazing supply of fresh local gourmet mushrooms. Chanterelles, bolites, um, chicken of the woods, oyster mushrooms, uh, lobster mushrooms, matsutake mushrooms. I mean, they all grow around here, I'm trying to utilize them and, and actually show the community around here what exactly that they have in their own backyards. So now we got uh, sizzling going on here. The chicken slightly browned off. And here comes the fun part. We got fire. And this is Marsala wine. And this is what actually makes chicken Marsala, chicken Marsala. It's starting to look real nice. Perfect, good color to it. Add a little bit of fresh cut parsley to it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and plate it. Take my chicken. I'll lay it on there just like that. Finish it off with this lovely porcini mushroom marsala sauce. All right, there you are. That looks beautiful. Black Trumpet signature dish of chicken marsala. Um, today we're featuring fresh porcini mushrooms. And we also have our house-made uh, Italian herb focaccia bread. Uh, the Oregon Coast is really well known for their local mushrooms. They actually go all over the world. Mm, fantastic. It was going to be an early night for me because tomorrow I get to go out on the ocean for a chartered fishing trip. The Oregon coast is famous for sports fishing and the options seem endless. Depending on the season, there is a real good chance of catching salmon or steelhead from one of the many rivers or booking a trip on a charter boat and going out in the ocean for rockfish, halibut, or tuna. We have to limit it out by nine o'clock. After a morning of catching fish, guess what I wanted to have for lunch? This is the port of Brookings Harbor. And uh, this is a really wonderful place to come and walk around, do some shopping, coffee, ice cream, art. Um, but what do you want to do when you're down at the port? Have some fresh fish. Yum. This is the freshest fish you're going to get if you're down by the ocean. And of course, you have to have the clam chowder in a bowl. Look at that. How beautiful. Yum. In addition to the beaches, there are also some lovely botanical gardens and parks around town. Biscuit and I are standing in Azalea Park. This is a beautiful park. It's 33 acres. It's lovely year round because we're on the banana belt, which means there's a warm air stream. These azaleas, some of them have been here since 1805. And some of the things that are fun is Kids Town, if you want to come and bring your kids here to run around and be crazy. Uh, one of my favorite things in Azalea Park is in December when they do the Christmas lights and this entire park turns into something you've never seen before. A lot of sea creatures and they have summer concerts that are free. If you're here in the summer, you can look that up. This is the Checkco Museum. It's just a couple minutes south of Brookings and it is the oldest building in the Checkco Valley built in 1857. Inside there are displays of 19th century pioneer life and on the same grounds here at the museum you will find the largest Monterey Cypress tree in the United States at 130 feet tall. Uh, one of the things that's really special and unique is the Redwood Cinema. They have 3D which is really special for being in a little coastal town and they also have something I've never seen in any other theater anywhere. They have love seats. Other activities around Brookings include golfing and exploring the Chetco River. I'm here with Ed Murdoch. He's a general manager out here at Salmon Run Golf Course. And how far are we from Brookings? We're about three and a half miles up the South Bank Road. It is so quiet and so beautiful up here. Yeah, isn't it? It's a great place to come and play. Uh, the holes are beautiful. Each of them have, has its own unique characteristics. Lots of elevated tee shots. We even have an island green. Um, we're up here all alone, so you have, uh, have the hole to yourself almost on every hole. Um, it's a championship 18-hole golf course. 
Uh, you have to hit your shots, be careful of your club selection, but it's a great experience and uh, a good challenge. I left the golf course and continued to explore the Chetco River. This is Don Hayes. He's a local resident here in Curry County, and he also is big on SUP. If you haven't heard of this, it's stand-up paddling. We are on the Chetco River up at Social Security Bar. Can you tell us um, about this sport a little bit and why the Chetco River is a good place to do it? Well, first of all, the Chetco River is a great place to do stand-up paddle, SUP, because it's crystal clear. And one of the things about stand-up paddle is it's probably the closest thing to walking on water. And because this is crystal clear water, you can see into the water. That means you can see a lot of the wildlife. I just love it. One of the wonderful things about coming up river just a couple miles off of the coast is the temperature changes dramatically. And so if it's 70 on the coast, it might be 80, 85, 90 inland. So if you're on the coast and it's foggy, you literally have to drive a couple miles and be on one of these beautiful riverbeds. Um, you can fish off the shore, you can drift boat, fish, you can stand up paddle, or just hang out right here at the Checo River. I always like to get a taste of local nightlife, so I decided to end my night at the neighborhood pub. I'm at the Vista Pub. It's been an amazing day in Brookings. I'm hungry, and so this is the place I wanted to come for fresh and local foods. So basically in front of you is uh, the Ezekiel. Uh, basically, if you start with some good ingredients, you usually end up with pretty good uh, finished product. Uh, we got locally baked buns. Uh, they're about 100 yards north of us. Uh, goes down into some Rumiano cheese and then some Hasting natural beef, uh, all grown within or raised within about uh, five, 10 miles of us, so. Great, well I'm really excited to try it along with the local beer and the local products and we're gonna meet some of your guys that you work with that get you these local products. I'm sitting next to all the local ingredients that are at the Vista Pub, or not all of them, but some of them. And so we've got here, we've got Danny, who got the albacore tuna because you're a commercial fisherman. We have Luke, who makes the buns down the street, and your buns are very fine, Luke. Well, I, I have to say that, because why not? <laughs> we, all <like> <laughs> we all like his buns. And we've got Zeke, who is grass-fed beef locally, and then we've got Rumiano cheese at the very end, that's Joby. And these are the faces of your local products here at the Vista Pub. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. 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 Let's eat. It's the Vista. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna go ahead and try and fit this into my mouth. This is the albacore burger. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's fresh. It's a tasty treat. Excellent. <laughs> so among some of the uh, fresh and local brews that we have here, this is uh, Checo Brewing's uh, Block and Tackle. This is an aged stout. Uh, probably second release of uh, Checo Brewing's uh, history. They started brewing uh, probably about a year ago. So very local, tasty. Oh, all the ingredients of a good stout. It was my last night in Brookings, but I still had one more day to explore. This morning, I'm gonna take a little morning drive and check out the beautiful Redwoods, maybe stop at Lucky Seven Casino and continue from there. California redwoods are the tallest living things on earth. Some are over 360 feet tall and as much as 2,000 years old. Redwood National and State Parks are just a short drive south of Brookings. On the way, I saw a herd of elk. After spending the morning with these magnificent giants, it was time for lunch at another local distillery. Right. I'm gonna make a peach sun martini. Fresh pureed peaches and our potato vodka. A lot of stuff went in that martini. A lot of stuff goes in. <laughs> our martini is your biggest uh, drink here since Most you're definitely. Yeah, since Most you're definitely. Martini. With the vodka, martini is definitely our number one. That is the peach sun. That is really pretty. I approve of that martini. <laughs> right here we have our wedge salad, which is not a dessert, but it's actually a salad. Uh, most people always say, what is that green dessert walking by? But it is a phenomenal wedge salad. Um, here we have our seared tuna. Um, very rarely seared on a bed of yakisoba noodles. And so what 
got you guys popular and why you're here is because of the vodka. Right. We started the vodka came first. Um, vodka came first. Uh, our owner Ryan has been in restaurants his entire life. Their families own many restaurants, so this was just a natural, natural progression from the vodka. Right. Um, and you're distilling it right here in Brookings. Right here in Brookings, just right across the parking lot. Yeah. That's great. It's a it's a potato vodka, so it's it's different than a lot of vodkas that you find in bars. And it's, it's hard to find a, a good potato vodka, so uh, it's nice, popular, gluten-free, really, really, really smooth, nice little sweet finish. I met Luke the baker last night, and today I want to drop by and see his bakery. We had the buns last night. Luke joined us at Vista Pub at the bar. Are you, Terry, do you like pumpkin? I love pumpkin. You know, I have a pumpkin chiffon pie that I did in there. Do you want to try that one? Yeah. That yeah, one? yeah, 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 yeah. It's in our display. Are you kidding? Yeah. No, I don't want to try the pumpkin no, no, chiffon pie. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot lighter than your normal pumpkin pie in there. Yeah. Oh, wow. You guys like it? Thank you. But it's not light in taste. That's why we're going hiking. <laughs> so uh, these are very easy little pull-offs right off of Highway 101 and between the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> and um, there's not a big commitment if you want to drive between Brookings and Gold Beach and just stop off and take a five-minute walk, a 15-minute walk, a three-hour hike. Um, anything you want to do, it's super worth stopping. Uh, a couple of my favorites are Indian Sands. We're going to check that out. It's a little bit foggy, so we'll see if we can see anything today. Indian Sand sits on the southern end of Samuel Boardman Park. It can be one of the best places on the Oregon coast to watch big waves, especially in the winter. So just a little bit north outside of Brookings on the way to Gold Beach, Oregon, is Pistol River. We're standing just adjacent to Pistol River. This is a world famous beach for windsurfing and kite surfing. In fact, they have a giant um, windsurfing competition here in July. You'll find this beach just packed. It's actually October, so it's not a really windy day right now, which is why you see the fog. Um, and that's it. As you can see behind me, it's absolutely gorgeous. And that's the end of our Brookings episode. And Biscuit and I want to thank you for watching as we explored the Southern Oregon coast in Brookings, Oregon, right here on Oregon Lifestyles. Bye-bye, Biscuit. <laughs> We're done, cut. This episode of Oregon Lifestyles has been made possible by the City of Brookings, Oregon, located in the heart of America's Wild Rivers Coast.